Hey, Trevor Matthews here. Thank you for continuing to subscribe to my video newsletter. Today, I want to talk about slugging and the effects of slugging and give you a better understanding of the different types of mechanical failure. One of the big things that I've learned over the years is that when you say liquid caused an issue, you need to understand what that liquid is and be able to explain yourself really because I, I've done it over the years where I would say, oh, liquid caused that liquid, but what liquid and how did that liquid cause a damage? Slugging actually is two separate mechanical issues which cause slugging, now, maybe even three uh, mechanical issues. Flood back causes slugging, flooded start causes slugging, and too much oil or uncontrolled oil return causes slugging. So that's three different ways that a slugging can happen. And each one of those ways happen differently. And this is what's really important to understand because you need to understand exactly what type of slug the compressor took. And a lot of people are like, what do you mean? What type of slug? A slug is a slug. Yes, a slug is a slug, but was it slugged by liquid refrigerant? Was it a slug by an oil? Was it an air-cooled compressor? Was it a refrigerant-cooled compressor? Because it is different. And when you start to understand the different ways compressors have a slug, it's going to make your job easier to troubleshoot and repair and fix those issues in the future. Uh, so it doesn't happen again a second or a third time. And like I've mentioned before, multiple things will cause a failure to the compressor. 80% of the time, it's a mechanical failure that leads to the electrical failure. So you're going to go up most of the times on a slug and it's running and it's not pumping or it sounds really bad or it's short, short to ground, turn to turn, short. So you go up and electrically, it's failed electrically, but it was caused potentially by a slug and that slug would have been caused by either a flooded start or a flood back, depending on the type of compressor. And that led to that electrical failure. So understanding the process of that mechanical failure is very important. So let's get into it. So here's a system, uh, an example of a system, and the compressor's off. How a slug happens in a refrigerant cooled compressor, so scroll compressors, large semi hermetic compressors like a, uh, 3D, 4D, 6D Copeland compressors, when they're off, um, what will happen is that refrigerant can travel through the system as a vapor. Okay, so from the evaporator, from actually even the accumulator. So if that accumulator is warmer than the actual compressor, then the refrigerant will start traveling through here and it'll travel as a vapor. And what'll happen, it'll condense down into the oil just like that. If that compressor is cold or the crankcase heater is not working, whatever, um, you need to take a look at it. It's very important to understand that because when that travels through the system back into the compressor, it'll condense in that oil. Compressor's still off. When that compressor starts up, you get bam. You have a slug, which this here can break the flanks. So the scroll set has flanks on them. So the walls of them are called flanks. And when that compressor tries to compress either oil or liquid refrigerant, it causes damage, it breaks those flanks. So it's important to understand that. But that's not the only way uh, through the suction line is only one way or is one way that refrigerant can make it back. It also can happen through the discharge line. So inside uh, Copeland refrigeration scrolls, there is actually a discharge check valve right in here. So right in there, there's a check valve. It's spring-loaded in the refrigeration one. It is um, this type in the smaller uh, air conditioning ones. But what will happen, uh, and the whole point of that check valve is to stop the compressor uh, re rotating in reverse when the compressor shuts down. It's not to stop migration. So if this compressor, once again, is cold, and all of a sudden there's liquid in your condenser, and 
you don't have a check valve, depending on the application, it may call for a discharge line check valve or may not, it could migrate down through here into the head of the scroll and bam, you get a slug and then it smashes those flanks again. So there are situations where you do need to add a discharge check valve. You need to check the manual of that manufactured compressor. You gotta look in it and it'll tell you maybe if it's over eight pounds, you need to add a check valve, okay? So this is very, very important to make sure you understand the compressor you're working on because in this situation, a major uh, flooded starts would cause a slug in scroll compressors. And this is what it looks like. If you cut open the scroll, how you cut open a scroll, you really need to uh, seal it down to a table, to a um, pallet, onto a two by four, wear glasses, safety shield, use a, a reciprocating saw. Some people use a grinder. I even see people use plasma cutters. You need to be really good with those. But I, I've used the saws on. I cut dozens and dozens of them open, lots and lots of them open. But you cut it open and it looks like this. This is a compressor that took a slug. And it could be oil and it could be, or it could be liquid refrigerant. But you need to understand what caused that failure. And I see a lot of these, I see a lot of them. And until you start cutting more compressors open and looking inside them or pulling compressors apart, even though they're hermetic, but that's when you're gonna start learning more and more. Next, air cool compressor. So how you can tell an air cool compressor, for, for example, with the Copeland K body, you would look right at the head and you'll have your discharge and your suction right on the head of that compressor. Okay, so when you have an air cool compressor have a slug, it happens differently than a scroll. So you have large amount of liquid refrigerant returning. And how this happens is through floodback, really. So you lose control of that evaporator, the fans aren't running, it ices up. Um, you have a dirty coil. All those different things could lead to a large amount of liquid refrigerant coming back to the compressor because it cannot boil off that liquid refrigerant. It cannot absorb um, uh, the heat to start to boil it off. So you have no superheat and all of a sudden this liquid starts making its way back or it could be oil. So you have oil, a large amount of oil come back. Maybe you, not have a, you don't have enough defrost. Maybe there's too much oil in the system. Maybe it's not uh, slow properly. And all of a sudden you have a large amount of oil come back, bam, yeah. You have smashed valves. So all of a sudden you'll see broken um, suction or discharge valves inside there. You have bent backers in, in, on the plate. So it's very important to understand that you need to take the head off to take a look to see what happened, what caused it. Why isn't this compressor running or why is it not pumping? You put your gauge on, it's not pumping. You want to understand why it's not pumping. You need to understand if you want to be a good technician and you want to fix the problem the first time. So major floodbacks or large uh, amount of oil returning back to the air cool compressor causes a slug. So let's talk about refrigerant cooled semi-hermetics. So refrigerant cooled semi-hermetics, they're a larger a compressor, but the way a slug happens is exactly the same as a scroll compressor. So refrigerant cooled compressors, uh, slugs happen from major flooded starts. So compressors off here, and then you see, see the oil in there, but all of a sudden you have vapor migration. So you have gas traveling from the evaporator, traveling from the accumulator back into the compressor because maybe it's in a cold, real cold location, the cranking heater is not working, you don't have a pump down situation in, uh, um, on this system. And then all of a sudden that gas, the liquid, uh, the gas condenses and turns into a liquid, liquid refrigerant inside there. And as you can see, the sight glass right here, it's above the sight glass. So if you have an over full sight glass in any compressor, that's bad because you don't know if it's liquid refrigerant or if it's too much oil in there. And you need to figure that out. If the compressor starts up and there's a ton of foaming happening in there and all of a sudden it drops right off, it's, that's a lot of refrigerant in there. That's a flooded start. start. You usually see the compressor rock back and forth when you have a major flooded start. And that is actually a slug that's happening. And this is what happens. The compressor was off. Now it just starts and then bam. So now you're breaking pistons, you're breaking rods, you're breaking discharge suction mm -hmm. leads. 
And it's important to understand that if you ever pull off a head and you have a piston full of oil, that's usually from a flooded start. And now you have oil inside the head there. Because there's actually Venturi's in the, uh, say before in the 60 compressors, they have um, crankcase uh, vent valves inside them. And then if you have a flooded start, it blows a bunch of oil and liquid refrigerant up through those. And this is kind of what it looks like. You pull off the head, valve plate, you flip it over, and then you'll see this. This is the discharge right in the, uh, right in the middle there. The, the puck there and over the top here, this right here is um, the suction, suction reed. This is a delta reed compressor because it's um, riveted in. Uh, but as you can see here, you get no suction as well as the discharge. What you need to worry about though, one of the biggest things you need to worry about, just say you pull off the head and it's just the head looks damaged. And you look inside the compressor and that piston looks good. There's another check you need to do every time you have a busted discharge. You need to do something called a wrist pin check. This wrist pin check is so important because if you don't, like you may be able to see this, this is a, just a little piss, piston out of a semi hermetic. But if you can see, see that piston, you can even hear it. What happened to that? That's wrist pin wear. And that's due to a, a damaged discharge. So just like this one here. So this is just, it took a slug and it damaged that. And what happens, the discharge gas is pushing down on the piston. So every time it pumps up, oil is supposed to get up, oil is supposed to get up into this little uh, wrist pin and really um, lubricate it. But when it can't, because of that discharge pressure, oil's not getting up there, you get wrist pin wear and you'll start having a knock in the compressor. Super important to understand because if the compressor is knocking and you get there and you look at it and it's just a valve plate, everything else looks good, you need to do a wrist pin check. And how you do that, you do need to pull off the pump housing, the oil pump housing, pull it off and then turn the piston until the pistons are uh, really almost top dead center and turn a little more and see if they drop down. If they drop down and make a sound like this, then you get wrist pin damage. You're gonna to have to replace that compressor. There's another thing you need to take a look at. If you ever have a compressor and you have, you take the head off and all of a sudden the backer, see this is the backer, this backer is off and all of a sudden the screws have been uh, damaged or they've been uh, beat up real good. If you have a slug, you're trying to compress a liquid, either, either it's oil or it's liquid refrigerant. And what happens, those little bolts that are holding the backers, they stretch. And I've seen this before where contractors and technicians, oh, there's a manufactured defect. No, when we autopsied or inspect the compressor, we found the bolts stretched and tried to screw them back in. They don't screw in the same way. What, what happens is that when you have that hydraulic force in, in there, it stretches those bolts. And as the uh, compressor continues to run, they start to back out. So if you ever have a backer that is off, highly likely that that compressor took a slug and stretched those bolts. So it's something to be aware of. And when it looks like this, the piston, you know that compressor is gonna need to be replaced. How to prevent a slug in refrigerant cool compressors. So these are scroll compressors. These are large semi-hermetic refrigerant cools. And that's really where you have uh, suction coming into the end bell of the compressor where it goes across the motor and cools the stator and the rotor. Um, install a crankcase heater. You know, you keep that oil warm. Very, very important. You know, set up a pump down cycle. So you're keeping everything in the high side. It's all in the, in the receiver. You have nothing in the evaporator. You have nothing in the suction line. So set up a uh, pump down. Do a bump start cycle. Like we talked about in the, um, in the flood it start section, have a bump uh, cycle. And what that is, is really that compressor pulls in for two seconds and it's off for five or 10 seconds. So it's really kind of trying to flash off the refrigerant inside that compressor so it, it, it isn't a massive 
flow start. So you're just trying to boil off the refrigerant, do that three or four times. There are controllers out there that will do that for you. Um, if the system's off for over four hours or the temperature outside gets so low and um, the compressor's off for a certain amount of time, it'll do a bump start just to protect that compressor. A correct refrigerant charge to oil ratio. You need to check a bulletin like that. But I've talked about this before. Refrigerant is chemically attracted to oil, POE oil. So you just really need to make sure that you're staying inside those proper ratios and then uh, put the compressor in a lo warm location. So that'll, that'll definitely help um, reduce those massive flooded starts, that migration of refrigerant back in. Check out the Copeland uh, Application Engineering Building 221182. I've talked about this before. A great, a great uh, resource as well as check that podcast. I think I sent it out two or three uh, videos ago. I did with Brian Orr talking about that specific AE bulletin. So this is for refrigerant cool compressors. When we get into air cool compressors now, you need to make sure that evaporator can really do anything that will uh, reduce floodback situations. Okay. Uh, proper airflow, proper air distribution. And what I mean by that, like you don't want the product overflowing, you know, covering up the return or the, the supply grills. You know, clean the honeycombs in the cases. Make sure you're cleaning the, the evaporator. Suction accumulator will help with that. And it will prevent that. Um, check for sudden uh, changes in load. That's another thing properly sized metering device. You have an oversized metering device and all of a sudden that you start hunting a lot and it opens up and it sends a lot of liquid through and it can't, it can't boil it off, fall off and it makes it back to that air cool compressor and causes a slug. Um, so check the refrigerant charge. Make sure you have the proper refrigerant charge or add those specific things. Like I talked about earlier, you may need to add uh, a check valve to the discharge line. And once again, Application AE 2211A2 is a great resource to, to help you out. So I hope you enjoyed this a video talking about slugging. If you have no people that are interested in learning more about uh, compressors, troubleshooting refrigeration systems, uh, please send them this uh, the link below and uh, hopefully we can really bring all our knowledge up together. And once again, Thank you so much for being a subscriber to this video newsletter. I really appreciate it. If you do have any questions or videos that you'd like me to make, please don't hesitate to shoot me an email, reach out, uh, and I'll see you at the next video. My name is Trevor Matthews. Let's get a conversation going.